Good morning. I'm going to go through drawing an isometric uh, flat pack light. I'm going to start with some simple, uh, simple little light uh, laser cut light shape um, like these ones, uh, which uh, I'm going to draw as a, a final isometric. Uh, and then I'm going to draw a detail of a join. Okay, so these are all very simple ones. Um, the next two videos uh, after that, so I'll do one video of just a isometric final and then a drawing of uh, the join detail um, with a exploded isometric as per the assessment instructions. And then the other two drawings, I'm going to go on with something that's a little bit different in terms of design for those people who might be doing something like this, uh, where you've got a single piece uh, that allows you to slot in other pieces. This one's similar, different shapes, and also, um, you know, talk about uh, the idea of two pieces. So if uh, you have a top and a bottom piece with um, a series of uh, repeated shapes that slot in. And the last two videos, um, so that's six videos in total, I'll look at these kinds of shapes, which um, really are a little more complicated. Uh, so you've got like a tapered shape here and uh, you know so the angles are going to be a little bit stranger. This is different to these where the angles are fairly vertical and horizontal and there's not too much um, that's complicated about it but this one's tapered and this one's obviously a, a series of slices which is uh, obviously very time consuming and only um, only if you dare really uh, but it's still achievable um, with laser cut laser cutting okay so the first one we're going to do is just an isometric drawing the final drawing um, of this particular design so if you've got in mind something that was similar to uh, the skills exercise you did with the pencil box um, this is a nice um, progression of that where you know you've got a uh, little leg cut out at the bottom um, you've got a base for the light fitting on the inside which is held in by a little toggle um, I don't think I'll necessarily include that in my drawing um, just for speed sake uh, and then it's got a nice lid that goes on it as well which uh, again has a few little finger joins coming up um, through the lid just to keep it in place. All right, so that's my reference. Uh, I'm going to start by boxing it in. And remember, that's the way that everything is begun when it comes to sketching. So I'm going to do it relatively big. So I'm going to start with the, the top and I'm going to just box in the overall. I'm actually going to ignore that little overlap on the top and I'm just going to box in the shape without the overlap. Okay, so uh, that's kind of my top for now. And then if I come down here, we'll go side and we'll decide how long that side is going to be. And I uh, probably want a little bit more height. Uh, you might notice that underneath I have my isometric grip paper so it gives me a, a nice easy quick reference to draw the angles without having to overthink it. So I'm going to make it a little bit long uh, to get those feet in as part of it. Uh, I'm going to do the front edge and then box in the rest of it. So boxing in is always the essential first step. Uh, I'm even going to make it a see-through wireframe style box so you can see where the base sits in reference to everything else just to make it super clear. All right, now um, this might feel like you're almost there, but the details are really what sell something. Okay, so once you've got your rectangular pyramid, uh, you might want to start with um, things like uh, this front edge, the finger join, um, which is, and, and the finger joins along all the edges, which is very, um, you know, a, a big key feature of this design. 
So when it comes to finger joins, it's not so hard. All you have to do, if you're coming down the front edge, uh, we've basically got an in out along this edge. So we'll go for here, we'll go in, and we'll make it just one centimeter long for each. So you could probably see the reference underneath, in and then out, and then in for one centimeter, out, in. And I'm only making the notch come in uh, you know, a, an approximate amount because it's a sketch. It is really just a representation of the idea, and this needs to go all the way down, okay, to the bottom. Okay, so there is the front edge, and um, you're going to do something similar on the other side. So you can see here, so where this goes out, the other side needs to come in. Um, the, the dark bit that you can see is actually the end grain of that plywood, that laser cut plywood. So it would, will actually be dark uh, because obviously the laser burns the wood. So let's, uh, so where it goes out, it's going to have to go in there to show the end of that plywood and stays out. And then this is going to push that back in on this side. So anytime it's the peg is out on this side, it's got to go back in on this side. So in and then out that way, in, out that way. Okay. All right. So there's your front edge. Not too hard. Um, as long as you start with that boxed in shape first. Now um, we're going to do something similar along the back. You'll notice here. Let's go left side first. Uh, we can see it at the top, uh, which is more or less, um, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but uh, you know, you can decide if it's symmetrical or if it's non-symmetrical as far as the notching goes, if it's gonna go like that, or if it's gonna go more like that, move like that. All right, so this one actually moves like this. So this is actually where it comes in and that's going to go back out and just referencing my page underneath, my grid underneath makes this job so much easier. In, out, in, out, in. Okay, so we're going to do it on this edge to complete the idea that it is a laser cut finger joint box. Uh, so this one you can see here we go out and we come in on the second one, the second centimeter. The isometric grid is actually a centimeter. Um, it's uh, a metric grid. So if you were looking at a normal grid paper that was you might use in like maths books, it would be a centimeter grid. But this one of course being isometric, it's isometric centimeter. So our drawings, um, you know, it's not too busy behind there. Okay, so we've got an isometric box, very straightforward, very simple. Now at the top, you'll notice that it does have a couple of little notches. So I might just do one notch across the top and I'm actually gonna project that up because the lid is gonna sit across the top. So this is one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna do the middle two. I'm just gonna push up a bit. And they are going to be my notch. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same on each side. So that's gonna push up. And that's gonna be my notch up and that's gonna go up into the lid to keep it in place if you can't visualize that. Imagine this is the full shape across the top. Okay, so you can see that volume that's going to go into the lid. I'm not going to do too much of that because you don't really see it uh, because I've got to do the actual lid as well as a separate piece. I'm going to finish the main body of the lantern first. Okay, now Let's do the rest. Uh, the other details that I want to include here is the notch down here. 
that actually the base sits on. So let's do that maybe about one centimeter up uh, from the base, just because I, I do want to have it lifted off the ground, uh, making a bit of a feature like it's more of a lantern. Um, so it will have the arch down here uh, and the notch itself will be like an opening that I will make. So of course my design, it's it's more of a, I've evaluated this and I've simplified it to make it uh, suitable for what I, what I want to achieve. So I'm just going to go with something simple like that. So that notch goes into the side, making it very simple, like that would be an opening. So if I just make that more clear, I might just get rid of this line here so you can see it. Um, don't really need it. Okay, so you can see that that's kind of a uh, notch opening and the inside piece, uh, the, the base where the light sits on on the inside um, will be will actually come through there. So we don't even have an opening. It's just the end grain of that piece that's sticking through there. Uh, if I wanted, I could actually have that project out and I could have a little uh, peg, um, which is a very sort of Japanese t um, joinery type of feature. Um, and this one, you wouldn't even need glue to hold this together in, in some ways because of the notching in the lid um, as an anchor at the top. And if you remove these pegs, um, these sides would fall out. Uh, but again, you could leave that off and decide to glue it. It's up to you. Okay, so I've got one side and I'm going to make this two sides. Okay, now I'm going to do the legs. So I'm going to decide, actually I make, might make it out here. Make it a bit wider than the peg. So I'm going to include a bit of a curve. Now you will see the inside of that leg. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to do the same over the other side. So right here to here coming across the top here, just judging because it's a sketch, and then adding a bit of a curve. This is the obtuse curve and this is like, in, you know, if you're doing a stretched curve, this one goes inside that acute angle. If you were thinking of your isometric cylinder and circle sketching, okay, and then we've got the thickness of the plywood down the bottom here. Okay, um, so again it's a sketch, it's not super perfect but it's it's decent. Um, I could probably straighten that out, it looks like it's kind of going up a bit, but relatively happy. Don't want to over um, do it given I want to keep this video fairly short. Alright, now the other bits, of course I've got a design. Uh, so this area here, uh, you know, I might want to box it in before I start doing my design, but the design appears in this space. Okay, so if I wanted to do a few trees, I could get a little bit creative. It's, you know, entirely up to you what you do on yours. Okay, so I've got a bit of a design on that face and I can just go over this with outline and um, make it a little bit clearer for you know those people who are you know if I was giving this to a, like a manufacturer or something that would be important to make this clear. Manufacturers would want the, the, the laser cut plans but they'd also want an orthogonal so we're going to do those we're going to do those in CAD Okay, so again, your design goes in here, so do whatever design in here that you choose. I'm going to just do some more trees, do 
something a bit different to the other side. Yep. All right, that'll do. Okay, so I can go over this with Artline later and that will obviously make it a lot clearer what my design looks like. Um, if I want to do the little notches to make it look like a birch, it's a nice feature. Okay. Right, now the next bit, I'm going to do the lid. So uh, again, boxing it in. So I've got my height, so I'm gonna go, uh, it's going to obviously sit up on this level. Okay, so it sits up here uh, as far as, yeah, that's probably not the best way to start. Let's start at the back start at the back okay it's going to be bigger than the overall top diamond so let's just do that first so it's bigger than the top diamond so give it a bit of an overlap okay so doing that first so there's my top diamond okay all right and it does meet here and it meets here and it's out a bit here Beauty of pencil, can always make little fixes, don't overthink it too much. Alright, now I'm going to give it a bit of thickness. You might decide to do curves on the corners just to give it a degree of sophistication and finish. Okay. Now at this point I've got a design, all good. But I really, really need to go over an art line so it becomes a lot clearer for those I'm trying to communicate to. So let's do that. Go over an art line and then I can erase anything that was a mistake or just isn't seen to make it a very clearly communicated final piece. So I'm just going to do the curves on the corners there. Starting from the top, it's coming down. So I've got my top pit, that's the only bit that's actually seen coming through, is this bit. And the rest I can erase. And then coming down the side, I'll do the full line because it does make a full line down the edge. Okay, and then adding the finger joins. It's best to do it in one stroke just to keep it clean. It's good pra to practice doing this without a ruler. Okay, and now we'll just add the finger joins, which are just these little notches. Now I'm going to do the whole thing with art line. And then I'm going to render it. I'm going to render it to look like plywood. And I'm going to try and render it so it also looks like there's a light coming through it. So there's definitely going to be dark timber areas and then of course the light maybe with a tinge of yellow area you know to make it look like a nice ambient light it's not a study light or anything it's really just for atmosphere okay that's not how i've designed it okay so here I'm just going to do the outline, trying to imagine which areas are cut and open, 
which areas are just etched. So I want to try and keep as much joined as possible, but allow some light through. So. Now sometimes a little bit of roughness uh, is to our advantage at this stage. Uh, being, the reason being is that if it looks like I've overthought the details, it means that I've committed to every single line and uh, detail on this drawing, and that's not the case. I might change my mind as I progress, as I do it in CAD, as um, you know, I draw up my final plans on for laser cutting. So, you know, if you're trying to make it look too finished, it actually can mean that people will pick over details rather than the actual, you know, very core of the design style that you're going for. Now, um, being that these are cutout areas, I need to reveal a little bit of thickness to my timber. Okay. So all of these bits need an edge because I can see that edge of the timber. On this side it's going to be here and so on and there. I might miss something because I'm trying to do this quick so I have to forgive that. Okay. Alright, uh, mostly okay, I can't see anything I've missed at this stage, um, okay, alright, uh, I can throw in those little bits of detail here, I might even put that cord coming out the back just to indicate that there, this is a plug-in light, okay, um, it's always useful to actually show how it functions. Just put in those little details of the, the birch, just kind of fun. Now, obviously, clean up. Uh, so let's erase. Oop. You see, when you erase, you obviously see the bits you missed. So, bottom edges. There we go. Alright, now I'm happy with the design, the drawing, now I'm going to have to render it, uh, which is going to have to be a separate video because I've run out of time. Thank you.